You know, there's nothing worse than accidentally nailing an animal when you're out driving in your vehicle. Man, the grief you take from the wives and the green piecers. And it's even worse if you got the kids on board and they get sobbing and, you know, you got to make them feel better. You say, don't worry, there's a special skunk heaven. And it smells like we're not in it. You know? and I'll tell you, the worst part is scraping all the gunk off the front of your car. So I got to thinking, well, you know, I pre-spray the barbecue before I cook dead animals. Why not do the same thing to the van? Oh, yeah. Even bugs slide right off here. I tell you, you can T-bone the moose, and as long as you duck the antlers, you can keep right on trucking. It's the Red Green Show! <laughs> and now here's the man who has no qualms about using the word qualm. Your host and hero, my uncle, Red Green! Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate it. Big, big news up to the lines this week. Actually, in the news. Yes, sir. Possum Lodge made the front page of the Port Asbestos Daily Movement. <laughs> oh, yeah, the reporter, reporter was here yesterday, you know, kind of snooping around and uh, snapping photos, doing interviews. It was pretty exciting stuff. I, actually, Uncle Rad, I think you have to learn the difference between good press and bad press. That reporter wasn't up here doing, like, a pleasant human interest story on us or anything. Oh, no? No, oh, no. <laughs> He was asking Lodge members pretty tough questions, you know, about the floating furniture out in the lake there, you know, and all the petroleum stains in the ground. Oh, why, are the, why is that uh, uh, the snowmobile pile smoldering like that? <laughs> of course, see, you know, you wouldn't know these things if you didn't lock yourself in the possum van. Oh, come on now. You did. None of that stuff matters, Harold, as long as they spell our names right. Did you even bother to read the article? Look at this. The town wants to demolish the lodge. Oh, Harold, no, that's, they, they do that. They put those sensational headlines in there, like, you know, man marries his own sister and then you, you read the article and the guy's like a minister and he married his sister to some other guy you know <laughs> see look at look at look what they do they try to make us look worse see right beside our article they got a picture of like a scrapyard there for gosh sakes that's an aerial view of the lodge <laughs> Trying to play the Possum Lodge word game, and today, local roofer Mr. Arnie Dogan is playing for a fantastic prize of an ant farm. <laughs> yeah, and the, and the best part about this ant farm is that it comes with a colony of ants inside. You can see them inside there. Well, you can't see them now. They must be hiding or camera shy or something like that, or, you know. But, <laughs> but they're all there. <laughs> You have 30 seconds to get Mr. Arnie Dogan to say this word. Friend. <laughs> Friend. Yeah, all right, Arnie. <laughs> Go! All right, Arnie, uh, someone you see a lot. The ambulance driver. <laughs> no, no, I say, okay, okay, after work, you go out for a drink, you take a... Neck brace. <laughs> I'm talking about the person you're with. Oh, my orthopedic surgeon. <laughs> Arnie, this is a very special person in your life. Kidney donor. Never leaves your side, Arnie. My IV bag. Always there for you, buddy. Oh, bedpan. Almost out of time, Uncle Red. Arnie, can you get your mind off of doctors and hospital equipment? Hey, Red, the medical profession's the best friend I ever there had. We go. <laughs> press will kill you, I'm telling you. Now they got the town council's got a court order that if we don't clean up the lodge, they're going to tear it down. On top of that, I got this weird cult has shown up because they looked at the picture and they see some sacred image or something that I don't know. I mean, they're, they're nuts. They, they wear these striped robes and they say they're from outer space, so I sent Harold out to talk to them. <laughs> I talked to him. Yeah. I, oh, I know. Oh, no. I know what you're thinking, but no, I didn't join the cult or anything. I'm infiltrating them. <laughs> I'm gaining their confidence. Well, you're losing mine, Harold. <laughs> well, no, they're really cool, actually. You know, they say their ancestors came here from the planet Gorgon in a distant galaxy. You sure it wasn't in a Ford galaxy, Harold? <laughs> No, I believe them, though. I believe them. Oh, yeah, they said that their mothership's coming back for them real soon, you know, and, they've, and they believe that Possum Lodge is their departure lounge. Aw, oh, Harold, come on. These are not rational people, Harold, all right? 
These are, these are weirdos. These are losers, Caroline. Go right back out there, and you tell them that the last bus for Gorgon left about three weeks ago, and maybe they should warp themselves up to Port Asbestos and get some dilithium crystals, Harold. Well, well you go tell them that. They, they call you the Grand Master. What? Pardon me? Yeah. Yeah, they say because you're the Lodge leader, you must be all-knowing, all-powerful, all-seeing. You know, they'll do your bidding. You're the Grand Master. <laughs> Shouldn't you be bowing when you speak to me here? <laughs> yeah, oh, okay, yeah. Sorry, Grand Master. <laughs> I'll go talk to them. Harold, either do the backup or put some pants on, for God's sake. Oh, the tortoise and the hare had a race one day to see if slow could ever be fast. They were neck and neck till the truck went by and they both ended up dead last. All right, now this may look like fun to some of you youngsters out there. As you get older, the idea of spending a Saturday trying to pull start the old lawnmower. Where's a little thin? Okay, the best solution, of course, is to get yourself one of those newfangled uh, riding mowers there with the electric start and eight gears on her and a big wide mower bed. But those babies will cost you over a thousand bucks. How does that compare with picking up a previously enjoyed full size automobile for obviously around a hundred? Okay, now, this Pontiac may not be street legal, but hey, neither is the riding mower. And think about the features, hey? You got a roof over your head here, you got a radio, you got heat, you got air conditioning, and while you're cutting the lawn, you can even have some passengers, as long as they have a high boredom threshold. And I'll tell you something, I'd rather spend a few bucks turning this baby into a riding mower than to take one right off the lot. All I have to add is some kind of rotating blade. Huh. How about a ceiling fan? <laughs> you don't have to buy one of these new either. Just wait till a tall guy has a garage sale, hey? He'll be unloading one of these. <laughs> and you'll be able to get a good deal on it, especially if he's wearing a head bandage. Now, all you gotta do is uh, customize these fan blades so they really are blades. What you want to do is just uh, attach some knives to the front edge of the blade using the handyman secret weapon duct tape. Boy, I think some of these knives are the kind they see on TV, where they cut the tomatoes in the tin cans. And that's great, because I have a lot of those on my lawn. <laughs> All right, now you want to attach this unit to the underside of your vehicle there. You might want to stay away from the drive shaft. No sense doing anything dangerous. <laughs> and then all you got to do is hook up the power. Now, the problem there is the fan is a 110-volt unit, and the car is only the 12-volt. So what you're gonna need is a special little gizmo I got inside here. Take a look at this. You ever seen one of these things? It's one of those power adapter things you use so you can run your CDs and your Walkmans and stuff inside your house. And what this does is it converts 110 volts into 12 volts. So if you hook it up backwards, it's probably gonna turn 12 volts into 110 volts, huh? That's the kind of thinking that makes me what I am. And here's a nifty little wrinkle. I'm actually taking my power supply off the back of the brake light switch. So the fan doesn't get any power until the brakes are off. Eh? As soon as you step on the brake pedal, the fan stops automatically. Talk about safety. <laughs> and golly, you know, for less than 150 bucks, we have made a custom size, climate controlled, extra wide cut riding lawnmower. It's got headlights on her, even got windshield wipers. I mean, it could rain during an eclipse we'd still get the lawn cut, huh? And that, my friend, is how you turn a Pontiac into a Lontiac. A Lontiac. <laughs> All right, so remember, if the women don't find you handsome... Should at least find you handy. <laughs> Want to talk?
talk to you older guys who may notice the signs of aging when you go by the bathroom mirror. <laughs> or maybe when your loved one says, boy, you've really let yourself go, haven't you? <laughs> That's when you tell yourself, boy, I gotta start eating right and I gotta start exercising. You know it's gonna be rough, but I guarantee you, you get onto a healthy diet and a vigorous exercise program and by the end of three days, a week at the most, you'll realize that it's not worth it. <laughs> but that's okay. See, your body is your home. And if your home suits you, why renovate? <laughs> so what if the foundation is settling? Or maybe the roof is sagging? Okay, the wiring blows a fuse every now and then. Huh? All right, maybe your pipes are clogged up, but as long as you still get a trickle, that's all you really need. <laughs> You're not a broken down hovel. Why, you're a charming home with character and history. <laughs> oh, your wife may not love the creaks and groans every time the wind shifts. <laughs> but you know, as long as she can still light a fire and curl up in the warmth, she'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, she may drool over those new dream homes she sees in the magazines, but I bet she'll never move from that cozy little bungalow she married. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. What is that, Harold? <laughs> that was a semaphore for lighten up. You're taking this way too seriously. Oh, well, I got a lot of responsibility here, Harold. I, I got to get my people back to Gorgon, and I got to prevent the lodge from being demolished. But if you say I'm taking it too seriously... Come on, they're not going back to the planet Gorgon. You know that. You're just taking advantage of these people. Well, that's why I'm the Grand Master, and you're just a guy in a striped bag. <laughs> I told them to clear the whole area around the lodge to use as a launching pad for the mothership. <laughs> and I'll tell you, they're gonna have the lodge cleaned up and the town off my back in no time. Well, don't you just think you are so clever. Oh, you know, I, I don't think the Grand Master appreciates that tone. Wait a second, shouldn't you be outside with the other Gorgonites pitching in, cleaning up here? I'm not a Gorgonite, I'm not a slave, I'm my own person. You know what? You know what? I quit. <laughs> yeah. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have to do any of that stuff because I'm an individual and I can think for myself. If that's okay with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> well, as you know, it's new member night tonight and uh, Edgar Montrose is brought a fellow he wants to present as a new member. Looks like another float in a parade of wannabes. <laughs> uh, thanks, for, uh, Red. Uh, men, uh, this guy I'm presenting for your consideration is a real good guy. A friend of mine, my pal, uh, Stan, uh, something or other. <laughs> I was up at... Uh, Stan's place doing a little dynamite work on a rusted out old Lincoln that was taking a little too long to evaporate. <laughs> oh, by the way, if any of you ever try to launch a town car into the lake, the trunk lid of those things can fly open, exposing the gas tank, and it catches the brunt of the explosion. And what you got is a two-ton out of control, surface to air and back to the surface again, incendiary device. <laughs> Which brings me to how I met Stan. <laughs> Stan lives in that cedar log house at the north end of the lake. Well, it's not so much cedar log anymore, but it's still a place. And it's easy to find because it's still smoking. Okay, the short version. We let Stan join the club. We help him rebuild his house, he drops the charges, and I get my truck back. All those in favor? Anybody who votes yes can help themselves to some very nice cedar kindling. Oh, yeah! Well, uh, 
uh, Bell said he wanted to play some street hockey, so I brought my rollerblades and I don't know. Oh no! Oh! Oh! No, not with skates. Oh my gosh! Oh, that's so. Oh, baby! Oh! Hey! He's trying out for the flames. Oh, yeah. Come on! Oh boy! What do you got there, Bill? Okay, all right. So I'm firing a few shots in, and Bill, there he's got his roller blades on there. Oh, oh boy, oh boy. Well, you gotta go help him out, I guess. Need some help. Oh. Uh, all right, uh, well, he seems to have gotten the pads on, and uh, I'm probably not in the best mood ever at this point. Uh, I'm saying, uh, Bill, maybe let me just check those pads. Let me check those pads, all right? Let me just, I think, uh, here, take the stick. Okay. How about this front unit here? Is that good? And that, this is, here's an important one. And they look a little thinner around the back there. Uh, oh boy. Oh, no, no, you're fine. And the body check. Oh, 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 oh. Oh my golly. Look at him go. Well, he's good in those things. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, look at him. Well, he's got the moves, hasn't he? Oh, that's, look at that guy go. Oh boy. Boy, those wheels are great, aren't they? Really well. He's on a breakaway. I better help him out. All right, come on, come on, come on. Look out, Bill. Don't worry, don't worry. He's coming in, he's coming in. Oh, boy, he's getting close, getting close. He shoots. Oh, he scores. I tell you, these cult members are a lot easier to deal with than normal people. Oh, yeah, they do anything I want. <laughs> Good to be king. <laughs> wow, yeah. the grounds are spotless oh, out there. Why, there's no garbage, no. there's no piles of tires, no. there's no old rusty water heaters. Boy, it's so tidy out there, I could barely find the front door. <laughs> <laughs> walk in and look, that's yeah. real. So what are the Garganites gonna do with all those old cars and appliances and stuff well, anyway? Well, Harold, what I did was, I told them that the mothership had actually crashed here several years ago and that those were the parts. <laughs> And uh, all they got to do is get them back together somehow and then get the whole unit up onto a flatbed, tow her up to Port Asbestos for a safety inspection, and they're back in business. <laughs> so you're lying to them, just get them to do what you want. <laughs> yep, I'm a born leader, Harold. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. Welcome to the expert portion of the show. That part of the show where we examine those three little words that men find so hard to say. I don't know. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> Joining my uncle Red in the extra portion of the show today is his best friend in the whole wide room, water taxi captain, Mr. Hap Shaughnessy. <laughs> okay. Uh, our letter is from uh, Maryland. Ah, oh, excellent. All right. Uh, dear experts. La, la, la. Uh, my doctor has ordered me to get some exercise, but I'm not really into sports. <laughs> yeah. Is there something simple I could start with to build up my stamina and muscle strength before I attempt a more rugged sport like hacky sack? <laughs> well, actually, no, that's a very good question. Perhaps you'd like to go on maybe the same fitness program as my Uncle Red. Unless, of course, you're allergic to beer. <laughs> I, would, I would suggest this viewer get one of those exercise machines. Uh, what do you call them? The, uh, the one with the handles and you sit on them. Ah, uh, the knotless machine. No. no. No, no, no. The one with the wheels and the chain, you know, the, the, uh, the motorcycle. <laughs> you should try uh, motorcycle jumping. It starts you out easy enough by only exercising your wrists and you learn to develop your sense of balance. And if anything goes wrong, it gives your whole body a relaxing asphalt massage. <laughs> So you were a motorcycle stunt jumper then, were you, Mr. Shaughnessy? You never heard of Odyssey Shaughnessy? <laughs> I had a 1,200 horsepower Norton. It had seven gears. And he's giving us all of them right now. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I was the best. I was all set to jump over the fountain at Caesar's Palace. This was long before Evil Knievel. I had the networks all lined up to cover it, but I backed out at the last few minutes on the insistence of the girlfriend. Oh, well, I'm sure she was just, you know, afraid for you. Nah, more for herself, Harold. She was in the sidecar. <laughs> right. Bye. Oh, man. Well, that's the end of that. 
the old cult there is on their way to the promised land. <laughs> promised land? How do you figure that Fort Asbestos is the promised land? Because a guy there promised me that when they show up with a spaceship, he's going to outlaw it. <laughs> God, you know, it's weird, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to miss them. Oh, come on, Harold, don't do that, all right? Cults are full of followers. They have no independent thought. They go to these pointless meetings. They have meaningless chants, Harold. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. You know what? They all dress the same. <laughs> Wait, how do you think the, the Gorgonites are going to respond when they find out that flying saucer theirs doesn't even fly? Well, I guess the folks at Gorgon are going to have to send them down a loner. <laughs> <laughs> well, meeting time, Uncle Red. Well, that's not the possible squeal, Harold. What is it? What is it? Holy <laughs> no! Did I just see a 53 Buick with a washer and dryer duct tape to the side shooting into outer space? No, no. Oh, thank heavens. <laughs> uh, that was a 54 Buick. <laughs> that was the possum, though. Yeah, uh, you go ahead, Harold. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be right down. Uh, if my wife is watching, um, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and uh, there's a chance I could be abducted by aliens uh, later tonight, so if you have any romantic plans, we better get an early start. <laughs> and to the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, you keep your stick on the ice, huh? Okay, uh, just, we got some good news. That weird cult is finally gone. <laughs> and uh, they're headed back to the planet Gorgon in their 54 Buick. <laughs> A vehicle not known for its great gas mileage. <laughs>